You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Two white men who shot and killed Amon Arbery are in jail as we speak. Gregory McMichael and his son Travis arrested last night by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, both charged with murder and aggravated assault, and they were taken into custody. Now, this comes days after a cell phone video. This right here, they're mug shots of these two. Uh, the father on the left, the son on the right. The decision comes days after a cell phone video emerged that captured the final moments of Aubrey's life while he was jogging through the Brunswick, Georgia neighborhood in February. Now, the third man who was in the vehicle behind them who recorded that video... No word yet on exactly uh, what uh, is happening there. Folks, do y'all have the video uh, from today's news conference? If so, go ahead and play it. All right, let me know when we have that. Um, so we can go ahead and um, go ahead and play that for you. Bottom line, folks, this decision came uh, last night. Remember, we, we were, literally, as we were going off the air last night, uh, this decision dropped uh, when they uh, sent out a tweet, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, at 8.02 p.m., uh, stating that these two were under arrest. Now, the crazy thing is that these other DAs had all of this time to actually arrest them, but they chose not to. The first uh, DA recused herself. The second DA recused himself only after pressure, but he had already determined that that they were not going to uh, actually, uh, that, that, that they wouldn't even arrest those two. And so folks have been protesting. Folks have been uh, saying that this was grossly unfair, but it was a local defense attorney in Brunswick, Georgia, who actually dropped that video on Tuesday. That's, that's what got everything moving. The next day, the DA says, he was going to take it to the grand jury. Wasn't good enough. Folks call on the governor, Brian Kemp, to have the GBI get involved. Then they actually got involved. That's actually what happened. In a moment, I'm going to pull up the news, the video on today's news conference. First, let me, let me bring up my panel right now. A. Scott Bolden, former chair, National Bar Association Political Action Committee. Robert Patillo, executive director of the Rainbow Push Coalition Peachtree Peach Tree Street Project. And we'll be joined in a second with criminal defense attorney, Yodit Tewelde. I want to start with you, Robert. You're there uh, in Georgia. Again, it was pressure by the public that made this happen. Uh, and it was the Georgia Bureau investigation who chose to stand up and do something and not wait for the grand jury like the local DA. And, and let's understand that um, this is par for the course in uh, in Georgia. For people who remember back to 2003, we had a very similar case in Columbus, Georgia, with Kenneth Walker, where uh, a young African American male was shot uh, unarmed in the back of the head by uh, police, and the grand jury de uh, declined to indict it. Uh, the grand, uh, this case went through three separate um, district attorneys, and it was not for the video being made public. Remember, the video had been circulating in Brunswick in Glynn County uh, for several months before it was made public. If it was not uh, made public, if it was not for the public outrage, we would not have seen this, uh, uh, the GBI stepping in, uh, going over hold, local Hold tight one second, Robert. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Robert. When you say it was circulating, what do you mean it was circulating? That other people uh, knew, saw this video? Uh, that is the understanding, that other people had seen this video once it was uh, sent to the attorney. Other people saw it before it was released publicly. Um, so this information is new to the public, but it had been circulating there for, uh, for a significant period of time. Uh, in addition to this, what we have to understand that the way that Georgia laws are structured, um, and we uh, remember we filed a lawsuit on this with Rainbow Push back in 2013. The way both the uh, citizens' arrest, for lack of a better word, uh, statutes are structured, and the stand your ground law, the same law that was at, uh, in question in the Trayvon Martin shooting, are structured. They give people nearly a plenary power to claim self defense, uh, even if they're outside of their home, even if they uh, they have no duty to retreat. Uh, and it ends up being the word of the person who is alive versus the word of the person who is dead absent additional witnesses or absent video. So what has to happen is we have to change these laws. These laws are on the books, not just in Georgia, but in 26 other states. And if you do not have the um, the, the fortune of somebody videotaping it or a number, another member of the posse who is hunting you down um, to make a video of your execution, then often there is no uh, independent way for a uh, an indictment to happen or a conviction to happen. 
And most importantly, in a case like this, this is a case for the United States Justice Department to investigate. Um, you see a clear violation of 18 U.S.C. 242 uh, regarding uh, deprivation of civil rights on uh, under color of law, a violation of uh, 18 U.S.C. 24, uh, 241, a violation of the Robert Byrd Act, uh, which was passed in 2009 under the Obama, Obama administration. So we need to put our efforts together to call on the United States Department of Justice to handle a case like this, which is in many ways a modern day lynching. Uh, we have to have federal intervention because throughout the South, throughout the history of the civil rights movement, we saw that local prosecutors could not be trusted to enact justice in these cases. Well, first of all, not necessarily know we can trust this current Department of Justice. This is the news conference today where the GBI announced the arrest uh, of these two McMichaels. Statutorily become involved when we're asked to become involved. You know, and I, I, we don't work off of a timeline. In a perfect world, would we prefer to have been asked to become involved in February? Of course. But sometimes it isn't a perfect world. So we have to deal with the situation as it's placed in front of us. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Dr. Drucker, when you say the, you're going to continue investigating, mm -hmm. will that expand to the Glenn County Police Department and also the DA's office? It, only exp it will only expand to what's relevant to this murder investigation. We've been asked to conduct a murder investigation. That's what we're conducting. Yes. The only, only way I can uh, answer that is to tell you that anything that's relevant to the murder investigation we're doing, we will look at. If it's relevant to the murder investigation, which is what we've been asked to do and it's what we're doing, then we'll look at it. If it isn't relevant to that issue, then we won't. Director, are you concerned that you became involved? In, are you concerned that you became involved in the case so late and that it took more than 10 weeks for an arrest to be made? Are you frustrated by the delay, the 10 week delay? In well, again, I'll, I'll preface it by saying what I said a moment ago. Um, <clears throat> the way we look at cases, um, if we can become involved in a case when there's still an active crime scene, when, when something just happened, that's always better for my people. It always is because we're not reinventing the wheel. We're not depending on what someone else done. We're starting with what we do from the beginning. And so in a perfect situation, that's the best way to get the GBI involved. But again, if I told you this was the first time we ever came in late in the case, it wouldn't be true. It's happened before. Uh, and, and so, you know, my, my folks, I think, have done a tremendous job considering when they got involved how, and, and, and the time they got involved to do what they've done to this point. But, but it, 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 I would be... I would be foolish to tell you that things wouldn't be better for us as an agency if we didn't get involved very, very early in a case. I see you. Yes, sir. Reynolds, um, the attorney that apparently leaked the video said that it's a full unedited video. And have you been able to confirm that? And also, is it the only video that your office has seen of the shooting? Well, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not comfortable talking about a whole lot more evidence about the underlying case at this point because we're not through with the investigation. We've obviously observed the video that we have. Uh, whether or not there are any additional videos, I don't know of any. But uh, regarding uh, the length, the editing, anything of that nature, you know, we have our experts looking at it, and we'll make that decision down the road. Right now, I'm not comfortable speaking on it. Yeah, right. Scott Bolden. Scott, when you look at uh, what, what took place here, this DA decided late. Uh, and let's be real clear, the DA only asked the GBI to get involved when the video became public because he was under pressure to do so. It was abundantly clear they were trying to sweep this thing under the rug and hope everybody forgot. Well, the, 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 you're absolutely right, but here's a, another a legal viewpoint uh, that as a former prosecutor, your job is to determine whether there is sufficient evidence to charge a crime. That is, if the elements of murder, you have intentionality, you have a death, and you have an actor, and you have a weapon in most jurisdictions. And that's really what you do as a prosecutor, or you put it in the grand jury. Here, the 10-week or 13-week delay, in part, was because you had a prosecutor who looked at the case, even though they later recused themselves, 
they they looked at the elements of the crime of murder or aggravated battery, and then what they determined is they then looked at the defenses in the case, which is completely inappropriate for a prosecutor to do. There's hell, a hell, I, I, thought the DA, where I thought the DA. I thought the DA was a defense attorney. So what now? I thought the DA was a defense attorney. The way his document read. Right. right. So they looked at whether there were any defenses, which is completely inappropriate, and then determined that I can't prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. I'm not putting in the grand jury. It's clear they've got a defense, but that doesn't absolve you of a crime because you have a defense. All it does is absolve you of being charged, and so highly inappropriate. Now we've lost 13 weeks. This is really important too, Roland. How many witnesses have we lost? How much, many? How many documents have been lost? How many uh, uh, pieces of evidence no longer exist, if you will? And I'm going to tell you, the defense is going to put up the defense of self-defense, and they have lined it up to to attack the prosecution's case already. And this is going to be a difficult case to prove, despite the spotlight, in part because of that 13-week delay. In fact, your deed. Because this prosecutor hands you essentially your entire defense, they are going to stand before yeah. a jury. They're going to actually put that prosecutor on the stand, even though he recused himself, and they're going to sit there and ask him, well, did you do this, do this? And they're going to hope that that jury goes, well, that's a district attorney. We believe him. Right, but he already loses credibility in that he already established he had to recuse himself because he had previously had a working relationship with either the father, who I believe is Gregory McMichael, who is a DA investigator. So he had to recuse himself because he couldn't be impartial. So whatever he says yeah. on the stand has to be taken with a grain of salt. Yeah, but that's depending on the jury actually taking it with a grain yeah, of salt. And then if the jury is coming from this community, it's a good bet. It's going to be an all-white jury. And, and one, one person... On, on one that, one, one, one on second. Robert, point. Robert Scott, then you'll Go ahead, Robert. I, I said, uh, well, well, one, on that point, remember, there was the first prosecutor who recused himself because... Herself. Um, Mr. McMichael Herself. Worked, for the, uh, worked for the department. Then there's the second prosecutor who recused himself because his son worked for the Brunswick District, uh, District Attorney's Office. Um, then it was transferred to the Atlantic Judicial Circuit, and um, and more than likely, uh, they will attempt to remove the case to another jurisdiction within the state. But if you know Georgia, you know, there's only a couple jurisdictions where you're going to have much diversity in that jury pool. Um, um, and on this issue of the uh, of the grand jury indictment, one, you do not need a grand jury indictment to arrest somebody. The arresting officer, the responding officer on the scene should have uh, arrested then and then let the prosecutor work it out later. You do not present somebody with their defenses. If you run a traffic light or if you get a DUI, they don't wait to go to the, uh, to the uh, grand jury to arrest you. They arrest you then, then they submit to the grand jury, and then they set you down for trial. So uh, this is why I say that federal investigation is so important, because all, all the things that have been mentioned previously regarding evidence, regarding witnesses, regarding um, the defense of self-defense, the, the defense is, case is already made for them going forward. Um, they will say that this, uh, that the prosecutor has already said that this is a self-defense case. All the witnesses will support that proposition, and they will simply say this was a witch hunt because of national media attention, people getting outraged, and they'll and they'll probably try to sue the state for um, for false imprisonment or for uh, their period of time and defamation and so on and so forth, and end up getting a check out of it. So it's very important that we focus on creating a federal in investigation into this. Uh, yeah, Robert, you, you you're right about that, but let me let me just say this: I don't think the former prosecutors come in in part because of what. Uh, my colleague said uh, before you, but also it's irrelevant. And because one person's opinion, even if they have the write-up, may be the outline for the defense, but it does not relevant probative of material as to the guilt or innocence and the conduct of the defendant. So I think that stays out. It's not like Cosby where they had the former prosecutor there because that was a civil case. So you got to draw that distinction. Uh, the other point is we may, at uh, the defense may not want him to take the stand because of his conflicts, and he ultimately didn't reach a determination. He's got real credibility issues. Um, Yo, Deet, obviously, uh, the thing that also jumps out, the third guy. What's up with him? <laughs> I, I think he may have probably an argument that... I think the investigation that's pending 
with regards to the third individual has a lot to do with what he knew. Um, how much information, how, what, to what level was he involved in when it comes to how they decided to approach uh, Ahmad that day? So was he someone who was truly concerned and wanted to uh, support them in their citizen arrest of Ahmad? And, um, and that's why he followed, and that's why he the police determine what happened? Um, or was this all planned? How did they plan it out? And if that's, if that's going to be revealed, then he's as much guilty of murder. I mean, right now they're presumed to be innocent, so of course alleged. I'm a lawyer, I've got to say that. But if it is revealed <laughs> in this investigation that he was there from the start in planning how they were going to hunt Ahmad down, then he should be uh, arrested really soon and for the same charge. Every single night. We've got some of the top black experts. You're not going to see them on cable news or broadcast news because you swear black people aren't experts when it comes to this health crisis. That's why we have this show and why we do what we do every day on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Joining us right now is retired General Russell Honoré. Uh, thanks just for the Black Surgeon General, Dr. Jocelyn Elders. John Hope Bryant, he is the founder of Operation Hope. Senator Kamala Harris of California. Dr. Sadrina Calder, retired General Lloyd Austin. Congresswoman Karen Bass, Commissioner Omari Hardy. Bureau President in Brooklyn, Eric Adams. Dr. Joseph Graves, America's Wealth Coach, Deborah Owens. Dr. Corey A. Bear, Patel Salt. Uh, how University Institute. Pastor Jamal Bryant, a doctor. Uh, Christy McDowell, Benja Ajilore, senior economist at the Center for American Progress. Gilda Daniels, again, author of the book, The Crisis of Voter Suppression in America. Four stars, General Kip Ward. Dr. Oliver Brooks is president of the National Medical Association, president of the American Medical Association, Dr. Patrice Harris. Joby Benjamin, Dr. Alexia Gaffney, infectious disease specialist. Dr. George's Benjamin, uh, executive director of the American, American Public Health Association. Malcolm Nance, family medicine physician Dr. Jen Caudle, Dr. Tashaka Cunningham, a molecular biologist, Kat Stafford. She's a national race and ethnicity reporter for the Associated Press. Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick, uh, who is the president of Howard University, Congresswoman Yvette Clark uh, from the state of New York, William Springs, AFL-CIO economist, uh, Andrea James, executive director of the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls. All right, let's go to Capitol Hill. Congressman Gregory Meeks, Congresswoman Anna Johnson of Texas, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Minnesota Senior Amy Klobuchar, mental health clinician Jamie Singletary, Prince George's County State's Attorney Aisha Brayboy, as well as Dylan uh, Harry, ACLU Justice Division Strategist. Uh, Dr. Cindy Duke, uh, she's a virologist, Principal Steve Perry of Capital Prep. Health and Wellness Specialist Dr. Yolandra Hancock, Desmond Mead, President of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, Cliff Albright, who is the co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Michael Harriet with the group, the Mina McWhorter, founder of Love by the Hand of Dr. Julian Malvo, Economist President. Merida Bennett College. Corner Michael Fowler is a mayor of Atlanta. Keisha Lance Bottoms, mental health therapist Suzette Clark. Justin Gibney, attorney and political strategist, and Bishop Vincent Matthews Jr. Dr. Suzette McKinney, CEO and executive director of the Illinois Medical District. Dr. Leon Madugo, president elect of the National Medical Association. Jana Bailey, mayor of Moss Point, uh, Mississippi. Uh, Mario King. We're going to keep driving this thing to make sure our people are fully aware, safe, protected from coronavirus. You get the top medical experts, the top business experts, top political experts, top religious experts, because that's why we do what we do, unapologetically and unfiltered. Ain't nobody else in the black media space doing what we do. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.